obviously not how you want to end, but um, just kind of thoughts on today and, 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 and it being the end. Well, I think for, for the guys that have seen us so much this year, you know, today is a culmination of kind of how it's gone. You know, we just um, fell short, you know, um, and almost had to play perfect baseball. We just felt like this last four to six weeks, we almost, you know, we had to be flawless and we had to be uh, perfect on the mound without walks and we had to be perfect on defense um, because offensively we, we just couldn't get the big crooked number. You know, it's, it's over 60% of the time in baseball, the winning team scores more runs in one inning than the losing team scores the entire game. I mean, in all of baseball, we couldn't get those big crooked numbers. I mean, for us, a, a two or three run inning was about as big as we could get. And unfortunately, when we gave up a two or three, that was a big crooked number against us because we weren't we weren't scoring those. I, I know one stat we had this year, last year with the bases loaded, we hit over 400. This year with the bases loaded, we probably hit barely over 200. And that's that's where you get the crooked numbers and the big innings. And, um, and it's not necessarily just a knock on our players or our coaches. I mean, it's just not having a healthy lineup um, for the second half of the year. And um, But I give those guys a lot of credit, man, because they, they fought. They, they played through injuries. And, um, and toughness was our book for the year. I didn't know it was going to be for the reasons it is. But our guys showed a lot of toughness. I, I appreciate that. And as we always say, man, we're preparing these kids for life. And <laughs> they're ready for life. <laughs> I will say that they're ready for the challenges that are going to come ahead. As as adults, we we know we know how real and 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 scary and difficult life can get at times. So I do know this group uh, is well prepared for that. Do you feel like some of that was just guys trying too hard or Definitely. trying to do too much? Yeah, and as you, you know, being a baseball you know fan, right, and as much as you love the game. Dan, that, that's the balance in baseball. Play with energy, play fast, compete your tail off, but you can't try too hard. And and we went through that as and and my fault too as a coach, because I probably I probably coached too hard, if that makes any sense. Probably over motivated and, and over tried to tried to get us through the storm. Um, and hey, everybody do a little more and pick up the slack when when Napchik was out of the lineup or Peyton was out of the lineup or Benson and all these guys are, are banged up. And, and that, that backfires on you in baseball, you know. And I really noticed it in the Virginia weekend, probably the Clemson-Virginia weekend. I'm, I'm stubborn and I'm hard-headed. And I just thought we could, I mean, I could coach our way and motivate our way and tough our way through this. And, and these kids can do it. We can do it. And when we played those six road games, you got a glimpse of teams that are playing healthy and their stars are playing good. And then I got to see the bottom of the lineup where I've always stood here and bragged about how many times, Matt, have I said our seven through nine are maybe the best seven through nine hitters in the country. It's hard to be the best seven through nine hitters in the country when you're one through five or six aren't locked in and great. And I saw that in back-to-back -back weekends at Clemson and Virginia, and I'm not knocking those hitters, um, but the stats don't, you know, glorify them as all ACC players and, and this and that, but they played well against us, and they played well against us because, as you notice, role players and other guys can play their best when they know their stars are at their best, and our stars just weren't at their best. I mean, just, and again, that's not based on their talent uh, or ability. It was just just really playing banged up. Kind of building off the first question, you guys had the base running errors in the middle innings, three inning-ending inning, inning ending double plays. You've talked a lot about mindset and approach over the last month or so with this slide. Do you think the combined pressure of just trying to get out of that hole ended up doing you guys in on top of just the bad luck you guys Probably had? a little bit of everything. I mean, really, just, just a little bit of everything. This game, man, you love this game. Um, and the fine line between winning and losing. And we just, um, just trying to force it, you know. Napchin goes first to third last night. Um, and that's our style and that's aggressive. And But in baseball, you know, 
don't make the first out at third. And so we, we teach that. Um, and Gavin's going to leave a little early because it's a 3-2 count and, and he gets a little too aggressive and he slips and then he gets picked off. And, and Beard's going to, you know, get to third if this ball drops, but the ball's caught and he gets doubled off first. So it's trying too hard. It's hard to fault kids for trying too hard. But as you, as we say, prepare them for life, many of them we prepare for professional baseball. So we, we use the term a lot in the phrase lap, you gotta be professional. So I, I hope the struggles and, and, and the challenges and all the things they went through this year um, can help them because when they those that do cross the line in the pro ball it's 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 tough <laughs> and they're gonna face some, some tough tough time so if anything you hope the the struggles uh, this year will only help better prepare them for, for the next stage considering how well you guys started and how high you were ranked and the expectations does that make this more difficult to accept or understand very much so um, because I don't I don't know if I've ever gone into a year not thinking, acting, acting, talking like we're going to compete to win a conference championship, play in the NCAAs, and compete to go to Omaha. You know, I've often joked, um, I love my man, Coach Patino, but I've never used the phrase bridge season. <laughs> he could do that, and I love him. I think he's one of the best. But I've never said that to start a season. And maybe because I'm just not smart enough or bright enough or I'm too hard-headed. Um, because, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's the goal. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm okay if our fans expect that, our players expect that. Um, because baseball is a crazy game, you know. And who just said we'd have gone to Omaha in 07, you know. And I don't know if I was – preaching Omaha to that team, but I definitely was preaching we're, we're going to win a conference championship and go to the NCAA. So, um, and because we played so good the first half of the year, I mean, it wasn't just talk uh, or belief. It was, it was action. It was product. We did it between the lines. Um, and then as the injuries just started to pile up, um, you know, we fell below the, the threat, the threshold to win, and we fell below it and then just couldn't get out of that funk. And you, in the ever-changing world of college sports, you did mention earlier in the year about the transfer portal and talk about maybe not, as this ends yeah. now and you look forward, I guess, A, what do you do with your players? What's next? How do you kind of talk them through who's going where and you know yeah. who's coming back? And then do you dip into the portal at all? Yeah, and that's what I told Sean on the radio. Um, whether we finish in Omaha, uh, or we finish here at Jim Patterson Stadium, man, there, there's so much work to be done. Um, and it's roster management, number one. I mean, we obviously, we, we feel like we got a great class that we've signed and and got to meet with kids and families and the draft coming up. And, you know, you, you don't always get every signee uh, that, that commits and signs with you. So you have that battle. And then, you know, this is an unusual unusual year where we have so many players that you know didn't get to perform at the level they thought they were or wanted to and and so and, and because of the guys being banged up so yes you know we got to meet with this group um, and then individually we'll meet with players and you know it's who, who do we feel is right for us to keep who might already have one foot out the door right in the land of transfer portal um, you know, that, that's a challenge for coaches now because you could be coaching kids that might have one foot out the door. Um, and then, yes, who do we who do we bring in, you know, for, from, from another school? And, and then just a challenging thing is that player X, Y, or Z at another school, is he better than the guy at your school? Again, trying to forecast the year ahead. That, that guy in our program gets another year better, another year stronger, another year tougher. And, and so those are... Those are those will be some challenging decisions we have to make, but but I don't like I said whether we finish in Omaha or we finish now, our our world is roster management. Um, we spent a lot of time on that, so that's that's what we'll dive into. Uh, if there's any benefit to the season ending early, um, which there's not many, I don't want to act like there's a lot of positives, but. Knowing your roster and getting ready for next year, I guess that's something we'll, we'll 
try to get a jump start on. Obviously, with this being with the season just ending and you've got an entire off season to ponder and deliberate this, but with this being the second time in three years you guys are going to miss the NCAA tournament, is there anything heading into next season that you maybe want to, with your program, that you maybe want to tinker with or alter your approach to everything going on? Definitely. I mean, everything's on the board, right? I mean, everything will be evaluated. Everything, just the way we did things uh, from A to Z. I think you have to. Um, and when we finish third in the country, you evaluate A to Z because what what could we have done differently to finish one or two? Um, and it, for me, that's just that's normal. I mean, that that's um, and that starts with me. I always tell these guys I apologize to them in the outfield. I I, I wish I could have done a better job. I, I couldn't couldn't get it to come together. Um, and like I said, I'm probably guilty of over coaching or over motivating or whatever. Um, but it always starts with me. You got to self evaluate and what what decisions did I do right and where did I fall short. Um, as I know, our coaching staff will do the same and and we'll spread it out uh, amongst the, the players. So we're, we're all responsible for this. We all uh, I'm the head coach, so I I can get the most. Um, but we challenge these guys to take ownership. Um, if you're going to be successful in life, you got to take ownership. So um, it'll be interesting how these meetings go and and player to player and then coach to coach and, and program to coaches as to what, what we need to do differently to, to get us back on track. You're, you're one of the best coaches in the country, have been for a long time. There are openings now, complications like Baseball America, always throw your name out there as a possible. Do you expect to be here next year? I always expect to be here, um, but I'm not going to shy away from I've been very vocal right in the past few years. We got back from Texas A&M. Um, you can listen to my, my interview on the radio um, on 93.9. I was very vocal. If you came to my leadoff banquet um, and you rewatched that, there was some clear messages in that leadoff banquet. I'm not gonna get into it now, but I, I've been very vocal and challenging over the last 12 months. Just look at the writing on the wall. Look at where this program has been and, and you walk around, you walk through the dugouts, you walk under the stadium, you see what differently have we done since 2000, whatever. So it's, you know, we want to be here. We love it here. Um, but again, I, I want to work for people and be with people and, and a group that want to win as well. Don't tell me you want to win, show me you want to win. That's, that's that's all I ask for, and I think our fans ask for that. I think our players ask for that. I've been recruiting these kids. They've been committed since their 8th, ninth, 10th grade year. Well, they showed up on campus. They haven't seen a whole lot different. They said it was going to be different. We promised them it would be different, but it's not different. So, you know, as my phrase was at the leadoff banquet, are you interested or are you committed? I want to be at a place that's committed when it's all said and done because the kids were recruited to be at a place that's committed and ultimately we're trying to get to Omaha and win a national championship so it ain't going to happen unless we make a full commitment. Can you give me some of the positives that you take away from this year? <laughs> it's uh I mean, each player will have, you know, like Gavin Keelan and, and some of the young kids did some good things. And um, you think an Eddie King and some, some other guys are going to get better. So, I mean, there, there's um, – I don't have a whole lot off the top of my head um, other than these guys are prepared for life. We, we prepared them for life. We prepared them for pro ball. Um, storms happen, right? So – um, it's a part of life, you know, but, you know, yeah, they, they did great in the classroom. We did great in the community. I mean, I'm sure I could find a lot of positives, but when the season ends, as, as frustrating as it is right now, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's, it hurts and it hurts seeing your players hurt. Um, it's obviously, it's a sad, frustrating time. You know, as it should be. Like I said, I think our fan base uh, as well. You know, I want our fan base to know these kids fought, man. These kids gave it everything they had. But, um, but I, I want expectations. I have expectations. These players have expectations. Our fans have expectations, um, and we didn't live up to them.